Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm out in the garden. And I'm doing things that perhaps I shouldn't do because of my back. But this does need to be done. It's... Oh. We need to get this in a pot so that it can grow on. And, um... Yeah, it needs doing now. So I'm going to share a pot. This plant that's been left in here, the weeds have been removed. The plant that's actually there is a foxglove. And it's a perpetual foxglove, which is unusual. So it's not the species, it's not our native species. It's got to be some sort of hybrid. Because it keeps producing new shoots each year, which then flower. So I've dug out the pot quite deeply and put the soil there in case I need it. This is old um, soil, but it leaves a gap, and the idea is that this goes in the gap. That's if it'll come out of the pot. Yes, it will. Well, we've certainly got a good root system. Now I need to tease some of those roots out, so we will just tease a little bit. Basically, it's to encourage the new roots to go into the media and not stay where they are. And this funny bark stuff that's been set on the top, which effectively stops me watering properly, is going to go in as um, a mix. So, so that goes in like that. Let's settle those roots in. And then what we're going to do is put this media back in. Now this is rubbish media. It's old. It's been in this pot for a very long time. It's devoid of nutrients. And that's exactly what's wanted for both plants in here. If you overfeed foxgloves, basically they won't flower. <laughs> they need poor nutrition. And that really goes for buddleias as well, because, um, I mean, in the wild, our sort of species, it's not our native species, it's an import, but, I mean, it hangs out of walls and, you know, grows in all sorts of weird and wonderful places where there's virtually no nutrition, and it thrives. Um, and what you don't get is decent-sized plants with lots of blooms on in rich soil don't seem to do well under those circumstances. So, ugh. Right, so that's got it bedded in. Not dirty mitts now. So I'm just making sure that the, uh, the level of the base of the plant is the same as it was in its original pot. So, uh, that's about it. Um, all we've got to do now is um, think about the plant itself. Ugh. Now, it's now in a media that's quite moist and holds moisture because it's old. Um, I was thinking about pruning it to turn it into more of a bush, but quite honestly it's branching naturally all on its own. And the thing that's going to get this going more than anything is sunshine and I'm going to have to play because where I want to put it is going to be my um, Scots Pine Bonsai, my lightning strike, I need to be able to see and this really needs the sunshine so it needs to go exactly where that bonsai is so the bonsai's got to move. The sacrifices I make. Right so I will do that, that's going to be off camera but I'll get that sorted. I shouldn't be doing that. 
Right, I'll just get the camera off the um, tripod. <coughs> so there'll be a bit of seasick. Oh, right, so what I've done now is I've moved my, my pine bonsai needs the sun um, to thrive, that needs sunshine. In its wild environment, a Scots pine that's growing well would probably get sunshine for the whole day. Now tucked in behind that is the new plant. You have to bear in mind this is going to turn into something rather large. It's liable to be two meters tall and a bush. So where is the best place for that to be? This quarter gets some sun and then goes into shade. So does this. This gets the best of the sun and so does this. So I think that will be good. And in addition to that, we've had five or six different types of butterflies in the garden today. And of course they don't stay. There's no reason for them to stay. So hopefully this bush will pull on. And thanks to Gail for the um, contribution to allow me to go and get this. She's a bit nuts on the old butterflies. And now that we've got somewhere for them to land, maybe I'll be able to get some videos and actually get some butterflies. The ones we've had in the garden so far this year are first and foremost holly blues, many. They come and go. Now there will be another brood of those later in the year but at the moment they've gone quiet. Um, we've had red admirals, peacocks, small tortoise shells, painted ladies. Those are like a set, they're all in the same family. We've had small white and green vein white and orange tips, singular, one at the beginning of the year. And that's not bad for a start in a garden that hasn't really got the, the you know, the, 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 the need for them to stay around. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, Roses don't do anything for butterflies, unfortunately, and quite honestly, this rose does nothing for the bees either. I haven't seen any insects on that rose at all. But this fuchsia has come into its own now, golden foliage and some lovely blooms and a lot of them. And if you come round here, tucked away in the bushes, which need sorting, is the other rose, and look, Look at that fuchsia. That's come from nowhere. This is why I wanted to leave everything this year. And I mean, that's a lovely fuchsia with lovely foliage and everything. And what it needs is these bushes cut back so that it's got its own space. And that rose that's tucked away in there, that needs its own space. And I think it's gonna to have to share it with the fuchsia. So there's things coming out in this garden. I mean, if you look at the amount of growth on some of these shrubs, these are all gonna to have to be hacked back and I'm leaving it all until the autumn. And as for this wisteria, that's just, I mean, it's up to the top of that tree and I'm gonna to have to cut that all back. So I'm gonna to have to cut it off down here and pull it and hopefully it will drag down out of that tree. I can't leave that up there. Oh, it's my tree effect. Well, you know, the, the property's tree. Anyway, and the only other thing in the garden I haven't shown you that's, um, can I find one that hasn't gone over? We need some rain. I mean, look, this is a um, geranium, pelagonium, whichever it is. Um, and, it, and it's starting to die back because it's so dry. Um, and there isn't a decent bloom on there that hasn't gone over, unfortunately. Gorgeous little blooms. And, you know, if we had some showers every now and again, this would be in full flight. <laughs> and, uh, from the bonsai point of view, should we, should we have an oak forest? One, two, three, and there's more. <laughs> there's lots more, they're all over the place. Plus we've got these um, hazels. We've got this one that's pushing on. Uh, there's another hazel, where is it? forgotten. Over there is another hazel. So we may have our own ready-made starter trees, although I'm not... Oh look, there's more oak. If you look in there, there's two or three in there as well. So we could do an oak forest, couldn't we? Because they don't need to be massive trunked trees. 
Anyway, thank you Gail for the contribution for the butterfly bush. Um, it will not be as good a butterfly bush as the purple one, um, but when I went to the place to actually get this, they didn't have our sort of wild species. It's not native, but it's gone wild basically. And I think the best thing I can do is keep my eye out for one hanging out of a wall or on the side of the road and just sneak back there and um, cut. Yeah, well, there's a butterfly. That's a speck of wood. Let's see if I can get close enough to film that. Is it a speck of wood? No, it's a ringlet. So yes, another species. Go on, land again. Be a devil. No, it's going to go over the top of the... but it's landed right in the top of the hedge. But that was a ringlet butterfly. They are, to all intents and purposes, almost black, with lovely golden rings on the um, underside. The top side is almost black. So I'll add that one to the list. That's a first. So um, they're around. We will probably get meadow browns and gatekeepers. Um, they're coming into their own at this time of year. We have a lot of woodland around here. What about if we got a fritillary in the garden? Now, if you don't know anything about butterflies, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but um, that would be magnificent. Or a white admiral. Mm. Anyway, thanks Gail for the contribution. It's now potted up. It's in the sun where it will thrive. Um, it's got a good root system. It's now in a pot where those roots can extend and it will share its pot with the foxglove and um, we shall see how it does. The idea is that if that bush, buddlier bush, gets big enough it will provide the dappled shade that the foxglove needs so they will be beneficial. And we'll see how we go. <sighs> God, it's hot out here. <laughs> the sun on my back is hot. Right, well, what we need to do when it gets hot like this is go somewhere where it's not, and that's back indoors. Thanks for dropping by. See you next time.